Hey y'all, welcome to the UGC podcast where I'll be introducing you to amazing UGC creators from all over the world with all type of backgrounds and in whatever level they are in currently from beginners to super experts. This podcast is made for you to learn about UGC and to also get to meet the amazing people that create UGC content. So if you're looking to start your UGC journey, this podcast is for you and I hope you get to enjoy it. So let's get started. Hi, hi, Elizabeth. Do, do you want? Do you mind if I call you Elizabeth, or, is, or do you mind Lizzie better? Uh, Elizabeth's fine. Elizabeth, yeah, okay, it's fine. Hi, Elizabeth. <laughs> super nice to meet you. I'm so excited to meet you. Um, I'm a it's super sweet. introvert, so I'm like sweating like crazy right now because I'm talking. No, uh, I am too. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're both really okay. Yeah. <laughs> I actually saw uh, on your Instagram that um you were talking with clients, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that hasn't yeah. that hasn't happened to me yet and i'm like i immediately imagined myself in the position and i was like starting to sweat everywhere and i was like relax you're not there yet (laughs) i know i was like okay but it works out i don't know it's just something that you you do and once you're in there you kind of black out for a second i'm not gonna lie and you just keep on going and then you end it you're like oh Okay, it's done. Okay. We're done. That's good to know. I like I I'm still kind of like waiting for the moment to happen. I'm like, how am I gonna prepare myself? But you know what? Like there's a lot of like um education out there, especially on TikTok. Uh, which is yeah. where I found you. Um and uh yeah, your your content has been like super helpful for me, uh, especially for me doing it like a month in. Um but yeah. Oh, let me introduce you. Uh oh <laughs> my bad. I'm gonna have to edit this hard. <laughs> um so introduce myself as well obviously like hey y'all my name is consuelo i'm a ugc creator and welcome to the ugc podcast where today we'll be joined by elizabeth dominguez uh to hear more about her ugc journey and welcome elizabeth um here is a safe space to, to talk spanglish so you know totally welcome to switch it up i love i love the idea to incorporate especially like spanish um into this space it's safe and so yeah just letting you know in advance that's great because yeah. i speak english uh, yeah. all the time yeah i speak i obviously i mean too but like sometimes with like my friends especially back i'm i grew up in california um so over there i spoke spanglish with my friends all the time and sometimes like with english words i'm like um how do you say that in english um yeah 100 <laughs> okay so um i'll just be asking you like some questions and whatever makes you feel comfortable like you know share it um so just the first one what got you interested in ugc so this is actually a funny story <laughs> because <laughs> there was a time where, where I guess it's still right now, but where UGC was just taking over TikTok. Mm-hmm. Everyone's for you page was like UGC, like this is another way that you can make money at home. Funny enough, I did not have a TikTok, so I did not see any of this at all. Okay. And it was actually my sister who would send me these videos. <laughs> I didn't even have a TikTok account, nothing. She would send me the videos and it would take me to the web browser. So I was watching UGC videos from the web browser <laughs> and she would just send me random ones and she would just tell me like, I see you doing this. Like, I truly, truly see you doing this. Like, this is something that I think you would like, that you would be interested in. And I was like, yeah, like, I don't know. At the time, I was fully, like, looking. I was looking for a job Mm because at that that time, I was completely, like, unemployed. And I was looking, and I couldn't find anything. Like, I would get rejected back and forth. (laughs) And I was like, you know what? After a month, I kid you not, one month of her sending me, like, videos, I was like, okay, like, I'm going to try. I'm going to actually look and watch the videos that she is showing me and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try it I'm gonna do my own research I went on YouTube and I basically started researching UGC I ended up the reason or I guess the moment that I knew that that was something that I wanted to do and I had a passion to do it was I guess the approach to everything that you need to do in UGC Mm -hmm. so for example I mean as we mentioned like I am highly introverted 
understand. Yeah. I'm like, cool. no, thank you. Meetings, no, thank you. And so even like the, the moment that it just clicked, that, okay, I think I'm gonna 100% do this is after doing my research, there would be YouTubers that would say, well, UGC, like, you don't have to show your face, but you kind of, like, it will help. And I was like, okay, showing my face, uh, like, okay, I'll do it, fine, I'll do it. And then it was like, well, there's some legal stuff in there you have to do with contracts and all that. Usually that would scare me and I would be like, oh, I'll just stay away, I'll stay away. But I just had this feeling of, no, like, I, I think I can do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then it just, like, the moment that all these things started like things that usually for me would be cons would be turnoffs i would be like no for some reason i was making the effort to go through those things i usually would not go through Mm -hmm. and i think that was the moment where i was like okay like i'm gonna do this and i went full force (laughs) full force (laughs) into it just one in and i mean i don't regret it at all and i've been loving the journey so far that is amazing your sister knows you very well like yeah she was amazing does she does she do her do some herself or was she just kind of like no this is for like elizabeth to do this is amazing no she she runs her own um like furniture flipping business Mm -hmm. so she's into some social media but it's more like where I told her, I was like, it's so funny because our family is like, like, mujeres de, like, we're our own bosses. <laughs> like, yes, we're all our own. I love that. Like, that's what we live to do. Because, like, my mom did the same thing. Like, she started her own business back in the day. Like, my mom had always been, like, being her own boss. Yeah. And I think my sister and I inherited that trait because we're both like, you know what, we're going to be our own bosses. Like, we're just going to do what we want to do and we're going to follow that passion, oh, which I God. think is the is very much different from the the generation of like you know latinos and over there like breaking that you know the cycle of you know you actually following something that you want to do even though you might not get results right away Mm -hmm. it's still yes definitely definitely i mean i'm i'm very excited to see so many latinas also getting into the ugc and even content creation um i've been seeing a lot more especially after like uh this trend of um other latinas following uh, uh, latinas as well on tiktok for content creation i was like i'm all over that yes get me in yeah. there um but that's like absolutely beautiful does, does your mom still have like uh, that business that she started so yeah she well now it's kind of like a side hobby Mm -hmm. so she loved baking and she loves baking so Mm -hmm. she would sell like cakes cupcakes um and she started getting a little bit into the display art of it but like i said she's literally switching her passion (laughs) like every year i think (laughs) well she she did it she made some money and then she's like i'm gonna move on to something else now yeah so now she's really into flower arrangements so i was like very fitting (laughs) yeah listen if she has to explore like whatever makes her passionate that's amazing uh i'm also kind of like a little bit like that where i'm like this one's amazing i'm gonna try this right now and then i do it for a little bit not not with UGC. just in case some brands are listening you know UGC. i'll be staying here for a little bit but um yeah it's it's fun i think to to have like the liberty and the courage to explore so many things that excite you and at the end, yes. sometimes you find things like you did, like you, you found something that really kind of like inspired you to step out of your shell. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely amazing. I, I, this is definitely stepping out of my shell, but I am really enjoying doing UGC content and, um, you know, getting more comfortable in front of the camera. And yeah. Um, okay. Let me see. I have other questions. So what is something that you would do different in the beginning of your journey, of your UGC journey? Something that I would do differently? Yeah. (laughs) I would probably, it sounds weird, but I think I started at a good I think I would focus more on myself and my own personal growth. Mm. In the beginning, I think, I kind of talk about this a lot, but in the very beginning of my UGC journey, I was overly obsessed with UGC because Mm. there was this this misconception that you're going to get money the first week. You're going to get money the second week. You're going to get money like your first month. Like you're going to make bank. And I had this 
a misconception of that. And whenever I didn't reach those benchmarks, those milestones, I felt terrible because I was like, man, I'm not reaching what other people are reaching. Like that means that, you know, I'm doing something wrong. There has to be something wrong that I'm doing. So I would just work and work and work. And I would overwork myself because I was trying to reach the success of other people. Mm -hmm. And I think if I were to go back, I would not (laughs) do that, obviously. I think I would kind of be in the place that I am right now, where I'm prioritizing just really perfecting my craft and perfecting what I do in order to present the best version of myself to brands. And that way, you know, it's just easier to work with brands and it's easier to just be present in my UGC journey. Okay. Yeah. I, I think you wrote something about that on Twitter, on your Twitter account, right? Where a lot, it yeah. like, it popped off. Right? A lot of people were like, yes, like I feel, I felt the same way or I feel the same way currently. And um, I'm definitely still tr- struggling with it. Like <laughs> low key. I have like I went so I went on my holiday to like celebrate my birthday and those days off where I I didn't have access to like the internet I was like oh my gosh a brand could be reaching out to me right now and I'm not responding right away and I'm not creating content and I'm not posting it and everything that I worked like you know so hard for is gonna fall far behind um and like you you have to be reminded sometimes that it's okay to step back a little bit the, like brands are still gonna be there um you know it's, but it's good to take care of yourself and also kind of like take breaks as well and think how yeah. how can i um how can i get better at this in a more healthy way i guess mm-hmm. yeah yeah no because i think we as like creators just in general we see those benchmarks of other creators mm-hmm. and we think that that is that's the milestone like that's what i'm supposed to reach if people are saying they're making 5k we're just like oh my god like i need to do that if i'm not i'm doing something wrong Mm -hmm. and i just need to go and work but i think it builds up unhealthy habits Mm -hmm. and it was honestly kind of sad but at the same time i think it was eye-opening to have like so many other creators come forward and say that they were feeling the same thing because it's something that we don't talk enough we don't talk about it enough in the space or in the community like we see wins all the times but we don't ever see that many losses like yes. we don't see like people who maybe go weeks without getting a brand deal we only see the oh my god i got a 500 deal at the very end okay. you know and i think it's important to be transparent about those losses because it's it's normal yeah. and i think it just it, it helps with your journey and it helps almost you feel more validated that you're okay you're going on your own journey and you know everything with time will come to you mm-hmm. yeah yeah and I, I think like what you, what you just mentioned that like, that we see all the time people mentioning I got a you know 500 uh deal or like a, a ten, ten I heard, I saw this morning someone saying that they got like a ten thousand dollar gig like um uh how do you say it my brain is going in everywhere. Like they, they, they got it on hold. They signed the contract and everything. And I was like, damn, I wish I was there. And I saw them like, you know, a little way back where they just started. But it, I think I'm going to I'm going to be a little more conscious and be kind of like uh, posting. This week has been a little bit slow and it's OK. Like, you know, next week might be a little bit better. Um, and this is just kind of like the journey that that is true for many people. Um, and yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll probably that's probably something I'll be doing on my Twitter account where, where I'll be like, today I didn't have any anybody reach out to me. My, my inbounds have been dry, quite honestly. Yeah. But, you know, I'm still out here posting every day <laughs> wherever possible. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, if you think about it, that looks, I feel so much better than like you just like tweeting about, let's say your wins or you being public about your wins, Mm -hmm. like for you to say also your losses, I think people see the journey that it took for you. Like, okay, this person literally didn't have, um, you know, inbounds all week, but then all of a sudden they got this one thing. So I'm not the only one. I, maybe this will happen to me too. Instead of just being like, oh my God, like I just woke up and I got an inbound. Yeah. You know, if you just say other people imagine other creators are gonna be like man i woke up i didn't get anything Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know yeah right but then like if you put let's see like if you tweet about also like okay for the past week i did not get anything but all of a sudden i got an inbound so great excited whatever people are like okay so it's normal to not get anything and then all of a sudden get something Mm -hmm. it makes them feel 
are like just valid about their own their own journey yeah absolutely yeah that and I, and I recently talked to this girl that um you know she's been doing great on her instagram this is where I follow her mostly. And she still hasn't like found any inbounds, outbounds, anything like that. And I was like, you do you girl, like, you know, just keep posting, you're doing great. Um, you'll get it eventually. And you know, all, all her content is absolutely like beautiful. So, you know, fingers crossed, she'll get it one day. But like, if it doesn't, she's still crushing it like every single day. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, okay. So how many pitches do you do a day? This is a question for like the, like the people that have just barely started. Cause I, myself, I'm like, how many pitches am I supposed to be doing? And I don't know if like, there's like a certain line or like a certain number where I'm supposed to be like posting, but, or sending pitches, but well, how many, how many do you send personally? Um, so I have basically, um, pitch days, I guess you could say. I so that. I dedicate, um, a certain day to, which are usually Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Tuesdays, I dedicate to just reaching out to brands mm -hmm. and building that connection and that network. So in the beginning of my journey, I will say that I probably reached out to 10 brands a day mm -hmm. and let me tell you it didn't work <laughs> <laughs> because I at that point as a beginner I mm -hmm. think I was putting myself like I mentioned I was like overworking myself and I was putting myself in a place where I was not yet prepared to be between two and ten brands a day um and then I slowly after I stopped doing that I learned how to kind of pitch and like create an effective pitch like something that will get the conversation going, something that will let brands actually feel like they can respond to you. And from there, that's when I just started pitching um, once a day. And I reach out, I have two separate processes, I guess. I reach out to, I follow brands on Instagram mm -hmm. and I follow anywhere from 15 to 20, but for one week. So from that Tuesday until the next Tuesday, I literally engage with all their content so i like i comment just so they can see me and i'm like i'm here yeah <laughs> like i'm ready after the next tuesday i then go ahead and do an instagram pitch and i ask for an email usually this does get me an email of the person because i'm just asking for an email like that's it i'm not asking for anything else but um from there i actually move on to emailing the person and, and so basically 50 to 20 once um sometimes i'll also do outreaching on upwork mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. Let me start it off. <laughs> That's a whole other like episode. <laughs> I know. Is, like I don't know the. Uh these buying the coins what is it called where like you have to buy to be able to like apply to these things is wild to me yeah <laughs> but um yeah i've 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 gotten like a few kind of like i guess inbounds on upwork um mm -hmm. but they've been they've been low pay for sure um have i accepted some of them yes because i'm beginning right now and i'm just trying to like get some reviews and also kind of like get some content going but uh, i think yeah. i'm gonna be like a little more picky uh forward going forward now because i feel like i've gotten i'm getting better at my content and i do want to be paid my worth um essentially as well and uh i have to uh, uh fiverr i have to upgrade as well because i am charging you do uh, so yeah but uh i love your strategy on having like a pitch day or and like following these like companies for like a week and you know becoming visible um i saw someone on twitter that also kind of like does the same thing where she like for a but she does it longer she does it for like a few weeks where she like comments um, likes and stuff like that so she's visible and she does kind of like the same thing and i was like yeah hmm, this sounds good it works yeah because yeah. <laughs> when you see like people comment or like your stuff like mm -hmm. your content like on tiktok or on instagram whatever it may be like you notice you know Notice yeah. people who always like you're like oh this person oh comment it again thank you mm -hmm. and if you realize some of these brands don't have a lot of people commenting so yeah. it's easier for them to see you and like know your name and associate your name to like you know your profile and stuff so I mean it, it's worked for me yeah but yeah. no I'm definitely gonna try that I'm starting today <laughs> 
I'm starting today. I mean, I've I've gotten like I I have sent before like messages to like companies that I haven't followed and they have replied. But looking back at it, I'm like, oh, that's like because I, I I like I like them, but I'm like, why don't I follow them? Like I follow them on my personal page, but not on my kind of like UGC page. So I think I'm gonna start doing that as well now. Um, yeah. But that's a great tip, especially for like beginner UGCs. This is amazing. Yeah. Um, okay. So let me see. Um, do you do you actually once you get the email, do you personalize each of like the email pitches that you do? Yeah, I have a general template, and I basically the, the personalization part for me is kind of doing my own research of the brand, right. and maybe in the very beginning mentioning something that you can only find like on their website or mm. something like that. So a lot of the times if you mention, you try to sneak in their mission or their like their vision and their goals, um, you try to sneak that in and then it seems more appealing because you actually did your research. Yes. And so that's kind of how I personalize mine. And uh, other than that, I use a very like a general, general pitching template and then I just add the details. It is a little bit time I'm consuming I'm not gonna lie yeah but it does it does do the job I guess yeah definitely I mean imagine like doing that every day though that's I think that's why it's so like brilliant to have a day of pitching because then you can like really concentrate on these brands that you want to work with and instead of like having it's because it, it takes time to personalize it like it takes time to read yeah. and um you know con- try to connect with this brand um to be able to work with them um so yeah uh it, it definitely takes a lot of time for me um i i kind of like sometimes do five a day and it's tiring to like definitely personalize it and be like okay well let me concentrate on this and then um i also have to be able to like post things on it, all of my channels and um, be active in, in every way so yeah it's um, not it's in general it's a very overwhelming <laughs> experience yeah i would say yeah because there's a lot of different things that you need to do Mm -hmm. i think if you want you know there's like this this i don't know this platform i guess that that or this expectation that as a creator if you want to be successful you hear from all the other creators who have made 5k or have had 10k months Mm -hmm. you hear them say you know oh like you need to do this and then you need to do this or i did this and it worked and you just consume all of that yeah and you try to do it and at the end of the day you kind of overwhelm yourself with everything because it's I honestly never realized until I was actually doing it how much work it is like building up your social media filming content posting mm-hmm. content editing the content and then on top of that if you want to like optimize it for specific ages like for example if you were to post on like YouTube shorts or something YouTube shorts only accept 60 seconds yeah. so if you have a video that's like two minutes you have to cut that down if you want to post it on YouTube shorts mm-hmm. or like cut it in half part one part two (laughs) but it requires extra like focus extra things that you have to be doing and then on top of that like you mentioned pitching and personalizing your pitch reaching out to brands finding different things to do it's a mouthful (laughs) and it is so much that's kind of when I took like a break because I had to rethink like what what am I doing this for like am I doing this to just be as successful as those people who are making 10k like like what am I like what is the purpose of me doing this because this is a passion that I have and I for me personally I see myself being successful in this and I don't mm-hmm. see like a plan B. I like this is it. Like, and I'm gonna work for it. However, I kind of have to like just stay true to myself in the process and not like just overwork myself and overwhelm myself with things that I have to do in order to reach the standard of quote unquote successful creators. Yeah. Like they're making like, the big bucks, you know, because it truly is your journey 
and it takes time just like any other journey it takes so much time and if you Mm -hmm. think about it in the literal sense that you are building a business you don't see a business open from one day to the next you don't see a business have like success or profit from one day to the next like overnight it takes time to build up that foundation and build a strong foundation so in the future you can have success and hopefully like more opportunities to do greater things that will like just keep you going absolutely yeah and um i think I think, I don't know if I personally struggled with it, but I uh, definitely thought that, oh, this could be kind of like something where I can earn quick money. And it isn't. Like, you have to build a brand for yourself. And, like, you have to, like, build a whole, like, Instagram page, TikTok, you know, YouTube, Pinterest account, Twitter. Um, I'm, I'm still struggling with LinkedIn. Like, that for me is completely a new kind of, like, place. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a lot of work to work in UGC and um and some people realize that and they pop out like they get out quick they're like no this is this is not it and but I think if you work like you know healthy enough um to where like you you do get to the point where you can earn pretty good money it's just gonna take a little bit um yeah and that should be okay um because yeah. like you said business doesn't open like from one day to another like you can't just like open a business one day and then the next day you're making 10k now it takes like a minute a minute to to get to that point yeah um okay so let's see let's move on to the next question um oh this was a this one's a good one actually like what is something that you want to see improve i guess in the in ugc or in the ugc community uh, I would probably say we kind of touched on it, but like the transparency of mm. just what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, we, I mean, we love to kind of mask it as being like this glamorous thing. I mean, mm-hmm. just like any other thing in social media, social media only shows you a glimpse of what reality is. Mm -hmm. So I think for a while, like the glimpse that we are seeing as creators is, you know, just being able to eat free at restaurants if you do restaurant operations, travel for free, stay at Airbnbs for free. Like Mm -hmm. that's the glimpse that we are seeing, but we don't see the work behind it. We don't see maybe people literally on their computers like 10 hours (laughs) of the day. Mm -hmm. We don't see... you know, maybe restless nights where you're just editing or maybe you can't go to sleep because you're just anxious. Like, Mm -hmm. we don't any of that because no one really shows it as much or or no one really talks about it as much in order for us to realize the things that, that truly do happen in the community. We just see kind of the glamour, glamorized version mm-hmm. of like what UGC is, or like what we want it to be. If that makes sense. No, definitely. Yes, it's it's definitely very much glamorized. And I think as well, like um, I think a lot about parents in UGC, where they have to not only like balance you know, their children's life and their own lives, but also their business. It's it's something that, yeah, like UGC, the business of UGC is basically another baby where they, like, you have to eat. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, okay, so let me see. Okay, on your day-to-day, what is something that like wows you about UGC that you're like so happy and overly like, you're so happy just to do? I think just, I guess we call this my job. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a very like generic answer, but it's tr- I mean it's true and I love watching other people love mm-hmm. what they're doing. So I it's just like another feeling to know that other people are breaking that stigma of sticking to you know, maybe like a corporate job or sticking to something that maybe they're not feeling so much anymore and mm-hmm. they're going with something that they wanted to do. So I love just seeing that because it makes me happy that there is kind of that shift where I think especially because of COVID, everyone Mm -hmm. started realizing like, man, like we really need to do what we want to do because no one knows what's going to happen. Like no one knows. Like why am I going to be stuck in a a workplace that I don't love where maybe people don't treat me the way that I'm supposed to be treated when I can go and fulfill this passion that I have Mm -hmm. and monetize that passion and I think it's just amazing to know that you can literally monetize your 
your hobby. Like you can monetize your what you love to do, and not only in one way, like not only with UGC, like you can also do other things, like related to content creation, Mm -hmm. to monetize your hobby. And I think that's, I mean, it's amazing. It's like the the financial freedom that you're able to get with that is is great. Yeah, yeah. I I've, I've loved seeing that since COVID. I've loved seeing like people, yeah, like you said, following their passion and then like earning money from it. And I think that's definitely. I don't know if you've heard of this podcast, but it's called like the Manifesting Podcast. Um, and uh, is it called that? I can't remember. But the, the, like, um, they talk a lot about like when you like follow this passion of yours that you like absolutely love and makes you like super happy the money like glows and i think that's happened to like a lot of people where like it just kind of like blows into your life because you're already kind of like in this state where you're just enjoying it like you're you're just happy you're there you're happy you're learning you're happy to be creating and um you're sharing your joy with other people so um that like is is brilliant that you you see in other other areas of like content creation can help so much with that yeah yeah it's beautiful i love it does your mom have like um like a a tiktok account or something like that where she's like sharing her skills but we we, she told she told me one day she was like create a tiktok account with just me and watch me go viral and i was (laughs) like oh my god like stop no (laughs) she was like like like, we could make money i was like no (laughs) (laughs) so there you go yeah, my my mom wants to do like a little bit of like vlogging and she wants me to like get her like the the you know the stand that like all the UGC creators have she saw me on Christmas having it and she's like oh, me compras esto and I'm like what <laughs> she's like I want to be TikTok famous and I'm like you oh don't have God. a TikTok yet I guess that's the thing now yeah being a TikTok yeah <laughs> oh moms are so funny okay um did I, this is like uh, an interesting question i i don't well let me see what you let me see what you what you think do you look look up to anyone in this community actually or do you look up to yourself um i mean i look up to a lot of the i mean i look up to a lot of creators yeah <laughs> to be honest like and it doesn't necessarily mean like the big ones that have like a huge following i actually mm-hmm. look up to a lot of the creators that you know that just started and that are like like going and because like i mentioned they inspire me because Mm -hmm. they have just a dedicated passion for it because I have a passion too but I feel like sometimes like I forget it and I need to remind myself like like no this is something that you honestly love doing and I think there's a lot of creators who do an amazing job at staying consistent (laughs) and posting and I'm just like wow like they literally like inspire me to just keep on like posting but also being yourself and Mm -hmm. showing up as yourself your true authentic self there are many creators that I look up to because they do that Mm -hmm. like they are just themselves and that's enough yes and that would be enough you know Mm -hmm. so I always am super inspired by just creators who do that yeah definitely yeah I've seen a lot of like more creators getting into uh UGC and I um, I just look at their content and I'm like wow like like you know I know you just started but you're doing amazing and you just gave me ideas as well (laughs) I was like what I need to do Um, yeah yeah everybody like even in in whatever level they are they have so many things to share and it's it's amazing to like hear them and i think that's why like uh, i wanted to to create this podcast because it's not only for for people that are ugc creators that um have been doing this for a while but i also want to get like ugc creators that have just started and i want to hear their opinions of like what they want to do want to what they want to share um what they want to aspire to you know like to learn from them as well because in yeah. every level there's something to learn or yeah, to be reminded always. of 100%. yeah definitely okay let me see um okay this is a personal question not super personal but i mean about ugc but you're welcome to not like men or like say it how many collabs have you gotten so far um so far i don't know the exact number because mm-hmm. i've been doing this for six months yeah <laughs> but i have it written down but i mean i i believe 
completely, completely transparent. It's nothing over 20. Oh, okay. no. I think it, it got lost. Oh, I, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? you and I can see you as well. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I forgot what we were like talking sometimes about. you see the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to it, like recalibrate or whatever. Yeah. It takes a minute, but luckily, okay, we're back. I'm happy. Um, okay. We didn't lose a call. Um, I forgot what we were talking about. Oh, oh yeah. How many call ups you've gotten? So you said 20 yeah. so far. <laughs> it said no. <nope>. No. <laughs> it cut it off. It was yeah. I don't know if the universe just doesn't want you to, like, doesn't want people to know. I know, it's like, no, no, no. Yo, this is out. Okay, I guess I'll have to cut it out. Jeez. <laughs> okay, I guess, I'll, I don't know. I'll move on to the next question because the universe is like, no, ma'am. Uh, okay. Um, what, plat oh what platforms or methods have worked best for you to blend collabs? Probably, as we mentioned a little bit before, Instagram mm -hmm. is a huge one to get the email of the person that's in charge right. of collaborations. And then for inbound, I would probably say TikTok is has been my biggest one. Really? Or yeah, because mm -hmm. that usually people find me on there. Mm -hmm. Not to say that every single inbound, because kind of going off of the other question, I get inbounds, but a lot of them are low paying that I decline. Yeah. Because I'm just like, oh, like fifty dollars for a video, and I'm like. <laughs> Please. so like or they're like gifted collaborations mm -hmm. and the gifted collaborations i try to make them into aid mm -hmm. by just mentioning but it's always like 50 50 they're always they're either gonna be like no like we don't have the budget for that or you know sometimes they're like they send me an email of someone who is in charge of aid collaborations mm -hmm. so i was like oh okay so you did have paid collaborations. Yeah. <laughs> and then I go ahead and email that person. But yeah, TikTok has been good for inbounds. Um, so I can only assume I I don't post consistently like people who post like two or three times a day. Girl, I don't know Bless how to do that. <laughs> Bless them. Me personally, like I, I understand. I understand I can see how they can host that much. Yeah. But at the same time for me, it just seems very overwhelming and it seems like just go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. So I mean up to them hundred yeah. percent. Like they're literally doing amazing because I could not do that. But um yeah, I feel like if you do post consistently like that, I can only imagine you probably get more. Yes. So I think I mean maybe I can challenge myself and try it for like two weeks and see what happens. But I think I need to prepare like a month yes. <laughs> and have it planned out. So I don't know, but We'll see. Yeah, like I, I, I've heard so much about like posting three to five times a day, and like, okay, so I used to have like another platform where you talk about affiliate marketing, and I used to post like three to five times a day. And let me tell you, it is not for me. Like, just for me, posting once a day is good enough for me. Like, because then you have to yeah. post like on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and all these, all these places on Pinterest. So that's already yeah. kind of like a lot. So imagine posting that like more. I was like, oh, know. you know what? Yeah, it's actually something that I started testing out, and I am loving it. Mm -hmm. Is like on Pinterest, I have I. I schedule my posts so like i don't post every day on there but because i don't right now i don't have enough i'm not producing enough content to post every day but um i post every other day and i mm -hmm. schedule it for that so like if i have like five videos that i've already filmed edited they're good to go mm -hmm. i don't post them all at once i literally schedule it out so then i don't have to worry about it for a week yeah and then probably like on saturday or something i'll see what i just filmed for one week i'll see what i filmed and what i have ready and then i'll schedule it for the next week so that for pinterest has been working yeah amazing yes that, <laughs> that like, is TikTok true do this. i think I don't know if they're moving towards it, but I know Instagram has it where you can schedule. Instagram has it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that that on itself is like really good. But I don't know. I think TikTok might Oh no wait, you know what? If you have TikTok on your computer, you can schedule it. But it's not on your phone. I'm ready to try that. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's what was missing. Literally, I was like, oh, this would be amazing if TikTok had this. Because I would, maybe, maybe then I would post like two times a day. If yeah. I just had that extra video, I'd be like, oh, yeah, dude. But yeah, I mean, I'll check it out for sure. Yeah, let me know. How, let me know how it works. I still don't like post enough to like schedule it. Um, but I'm like, I'm posting as like as it flows and how it feels because I felt like with it with the other platform that I had, I felt like very, very, very kind of like exhausted, like doing all all those kind of like posting. But like just creating content like every day that I'm enjoying and want to post it, I'm like, oh, this feels nice to post right now. Makes me feel good. Um, yeah. And yeah. It's less sure yes for sure um another thing i actually wanted to ask you is like when you reach out to companies and they come back and they're like uh yes we'd love to collaborate with you can you would, would you like to sign up to the ambassador program how do like how do you respond to that because for me i'm like i don't want to be an ambassador though right now <laughs> i want to create content for you like what do you do yeah so usually when they do that, I explain like what I do. So I have to explain again that I am a UBC creator and that I create content for them to post on their own page. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the times also like right now I'm experimenting with not only saying that I am a UGC creator, but just like a general, I'm a content creator mm -hmm. that creates videos for you to post. So maybe because UGC, for some brands like if they send you the ambassador link that means that they are not fully aware of what UGC is yet mm. so maybe what I'm experimenting with right now is like instead of using UGC I'm just putting like a content creator that like creates content for you to post on your and then I make sure that the your is all caps your page <laughs> it's like i'm talking about you posting on your own social media pages not yeah. like me um but i'm testing that out right now but i will say if it is like a brand that you really really truly like and enjoy and sometimes i will sign up i i'm not an ambassador right now for any <laughs> i think but i think if it was like a super super like high end but not really high end but just like a big brand mm -hmm. and they sent me that i would be like okay yeah <laughs> be like, okay because it's kind of like if you see that maybe they're not using ugc but they send you like a, an ambassador thing it's still like putting your foot in the door like it's still like you're getting some type of connection with that brand mm -hmm. and if you post maybe content like they send you things you post it there is a chance that maybe they'll be like oh okay you can introduce your services to them once you guys have a good relationship mm. and they've seen what you do yeah you can always like, offer to like oh like if you want you guys can post this on your page for this amount Money. yeah that's yeah that's really good to think about definitely i was just like i personally was thinking about like you know maybe i'll get to a point where like i want to open a blog to like review products and then that's where i can like also use kind of like the kind of like the affiliate ambassador links as well in those um but that's also like really good to like just make the connection um with the companies anyways mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay uh i have another question and then I had two questions. Um, I think one of them you already answered, actually, um, which is like a tip for our fellow UGC community. And I think I I don't know I'm, I'm, my answer my answer for you, but it's kind of like be more authentic in, in the platforms. I think I don't know if you want to repeat yourself again because I was like the third time. <laughs> it's kind of like a similar question, <laughs> so I don't know. Let me know if I answered that correctly. Um, yeah. But I would also say that I know we talked a lot about the kind of things that people don't really talk about in the UGC community mm -hmm. about like overstressing and working. But <laughs> I would also like to mention that it is an amazing space yeah. and it's an amazing community. Mm -hmm. And honestly, a base where you just learn how to grow and you're always growing and you get inspired by others and you get inspired by their growth. And so it's not all like like super stressful yes. and that is part of it but it truly truly if it's something that you want to do and you have a passion for like you will find your place in the community and it's just a, an amazing thing that you get to do mm -hmm. yeah absolutely like um like coming from other platform like other communities definitely 
the UGC community, I was telling it to my partner as well, like the UGC community is like super supportive and like very open to help and, you know, super happy to answer questions for you. And it's beautiful and it's relaxing as well. And it's just kind of like, it feels kind of like, oh, okay, so I, I can be comfortably myself in here and, you know, share my content and ask questions and not be fully judged because I'll be getting help from people that, you know, are going through the same things that I am. And they're super happy to help. Um, and yeah, like and like any business, it's going to be stressful. But it's just like any business. But I think what's really great is the is just that the community is very, very supportive. Yeah. 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 Cool. I think that's all I have. But I want to like thank you so much for your time. And I want to thank you for being you and for creating amazing content all the time. And I can't Thanks. wait to see like what's ahead of you, like for sure. Like you're going to have like so many things coming up. It's going to be amazing. I'm excited to see what you have to share. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you for inviting me to being your guest on yes. here. <laughs> it truly course. is. It truly, really is such like a, a safe space, even though we're in our designated spaces. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, I think it's just amazing. And I mean, I'm excited for you to see you grow as well and to see what opportunities you get also. Yeah. I'm just, I'm excited. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, girl. Like, thank you. All right. I'll let you go now. And Enjoy the rest of your day. Create some cool content. I hope you get more collabs today. <laughs> and I'll I see you in right now. Who said you? introverted? Oh my gosh. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna crush it. Just like put some deodorant on or something. I need I'm like I need to, I need to put deodorant on like three times before this meeting because I'm like sweating like crazy. But you know what? <laughs> it's all good. I know. <laughs> all right. I'll see you around the Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to the UGC podcast and listen to Elizabeth's story. I'll be leaving Elizabeth's information down below. So if you have any further questions, you can definitely ask her. And again, thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe. I'll be trying to do these every week. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.